when you are faced with a situation where you have to make an ethical decision, there are some factors that are going to influence the entire decision making process. And those factors are divided into two categories. The categories are individual and situational. In this video, I am going to talk about the individual influences on ethical decision making. These are the factors that are internal to the person making the ethical decision. Let's move on with the factors. Let's get on with the age and gender part at first. The idea used to be for a long time is that differences in age is going to have an effect in the difference in personal and moral values. But the people in the same age group are not going to be the same all the time and studies have shown that. For a simple example, a 20 year old is not going to have the same ethical decision making process that a 60 year old is going to go through. That is true to an extent. But the problem with this is that all 60 year olds are not going to have the same ethical decision making code. Personal experience has a lot to do with forming the ethical values. And two 60 year olds are not going to have the same ethical code at all. The same case is with gender. Different genders have their own differences. But that does not mean everyone belonging to the same gender group will have the same ethical value. Personal experience has a lot to do in that case. The next point is, people with differences in cultural background are going to have different values. As a result, the same issue presented to people from different countries are going to lead them on with drastically different solutions. Some cultures value individuality, that is, working alone and looking after one's own interests. On the other hand, other cultures are going to look at the collectivistic values, that is, working with people around you and seeing that everyone is getting a positive outcome. Some people will look for the short-term solution and try to solve an issue as fast as possible with the best outcome right now. And others will try and look at the long-term benefits of everyone around them. That might mean that they are going to ignore the short-term benefits and make do with as little in the short term so the long-term benefits are increased. These two points are parts of the cultural dimensions of Geert Hofstede. If you want to know about the five dimensions in details, you can watch my video on that subject right now. The next point is educational background. The educational background of the person making the decision absolutely matters. A business graduate is not going to have the same ethical value as an engineer or an arts major. Employment is also important. Two business graduates are not going to have the same ethical value as well. That is, a business graduate who works at a small advertising agency is not going to have the same ethical value as a business graduate that is the CEO of a billion dollar company. Psychological factors like the cognitive moral development is also important in the ethical decision making process. Cognitive moral development talks about the source of your motivation. Are you motivated by what others are going to do when you make a decision? Or are you motivated by what others expect you to do? Or do you think for yourself and try to figure out what is the best thing you can do? That was an oversimplification of the cognitive moral development process. But for the sake of individual influences, you need to know what is going to motivate you to make any decisions like that? Next, we have personal values. A pretty broad term. What are your personal values? Some might have the personal value of never lying to anyone at any point in their life. That is a valid personal value. On the other hand, Others might have a personal value that allows them to lie at any point as long as they get what they want. 
that is also a personal value and people like that do exist the next point is personal integrity that is can you really follow your own personal values does your actions match your words you say that you should always tell the truth but from time to time you slip up and twist your words ever so slightly so that things go the way you want them to go so you're not really telling the truth all the time or you say that you should always tell lies if it means less trouble for you but you cannot lie to some people because you want a certain level of integrity in the relationship that is also possible might be a little less likely but possible that is the personal integrity are you really following your personal values moral imagination how far does your imagination run most ethical issues have a lot of options to choose from meaning they are not black and white and yes and no questions you can be creative in your ethical decision making process a small example would be better let's say that you are the owner of a bakery and one of your employees are on the verge of becoming homeless you are giving them enough salary that you can the options in your hand can be that you either lend them some amount of money give them a raise or do nothing about it the thing is your bakery is not the biggest one ever you can give them some amount of money but it will hurt your own finances a little bit but you can still do that and i think you have already guessed that there can be other solutions in this problem you can offer them a place to stay for a couple of months at the bakery after closing your shop i know i'm not the most imaginative person the idea is in case of ethical decision making your imagination is the limit and your moral imagination will have a big influence in your ethical decision making process unconventional and unique solutions can be valid if your moral imagination is wide enough all right these are the individual factors behind ethical decision making when someone faces a situation where they have to make an ethical decision these are the factors on the individual levels that will influence the decisions in one way or the other there are external factors that are situational that are going to influence the ethical decision making process of a person but we will talk about those issues in a later video i will also make a separate video on locus of control later this is the time i remind you that you can like share and subscribe to the channel you can also support this channel on patreon if you would like to support whatever it is i am doing in this channel and if you want to find out in details exactly what am i doing in this channel you can watch the video titled mission versus vision statements there i mentioned the mission and vision statements of this channel time for a short bonus the nobel prize in literature category in 1907 went to rudyard kipling he was a very good writer and you have probably heard about a couple of his works the most famous of his works is the jungle book yes the jungle book was written in 1894 and the characters like bagheera mowgli and baloo are all his creations I'm not going to use any clips from the movies that are titled The Jungle Book but I think you know who these characters are. All right. This is the official end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you are still watching, now is the time that I remind you to take care of yourself. And lastly, I really hope you have learned something new today.
Goodbye for now.